Chapter 9, Lesson 3, Probability of Compound Events. You will learn how to find a sample space and find a probability from a sample space. The set of all the possible outcomes in a probability experiment is called the sample space. Organized lists, tables, and tree diagrams can be used to represent the sample space. The three students chosen to represent Mr. Baldrick's class in a school assembly are shown. All three of them need to sit in a row on the stage. Use a list to find the sample space for the different ways they can sit in a row. So we have three seats available and we've got Adrian, Carlos, and Greg. So we can seat them just like that. A for Adrian, C for Carlos, D for Greg. We could also seat them Adrian in the first seat, Greg in the second seat, and Carlos in the third seat. Now there's no other possible combination if Adrian's in the first seat, so let's change it out. Let's put Carlos in the first seat. If Carlos in the first seat, Greg could be in the second, Adrian in the third. Also, if Carlos in the front, Carlos is in the front seat, first seat, it could be Adrian next to him and Greg in the third seat. Then we can put Greg first, then Adrian, Carlos, or Greg, Carlos, Adrian. This is a list and also a sample space. There are one, two, three, four, five, six outcomes. So a sample space just lists all the possible arrangements. A car can be purchased in blue, silver, red, or purple. It also comes as a convertible or hardtop. Use a table or a tree diagram to find the sample space for the different styles in which the car can be purchased. So let's try a tree diagram. We have color, and the colors can be blue, silver, red, or purple. And then we have the top part of the car, which can be hard top or convertible. So if you have a blue car, it could be either hard top or convertible. Same thing with a silver car. It could be hard top or convertible. Red car, hard top or convertible. Purple car, hard top or convertible. And then we also want to make sure we list the sample space. So just follow the tree. Blue, hard top, so BH. Blue, convertible. Silver hard top, silver convertible, red hard top, red convertible, purple hard top, and purple convertible. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight outcomes. There are eight possibilities. The table shows the sandwich choices for a picnic. Find the sample space using a list, table, or tree diagram for a sandwich consisting of one type of meat and one type of bread. So we've done a list, we've done a tree diagram, now let's do the table. We can still say meat and bread as our categories. And the meat could be ham, bread could be rye. The meat could be ham, bread, sourdough, or ham and white bread. You could also have a turkey sandwich with rye bread, turkey with sourdough, or turkey with white. 
So our sample space is ham rye, ham sourdough, ham white, turkey rye, turkey sourdough, or turkey white. This is your sample space, and there are six outcomes. Find the sample space of tossing a coin and spinning the spinner below. So if you toss a coin, you could have heads or tails. If you spin the spinner, you could have one, two, three, four, or five. So let's do a list. If I flip a heads, I could get one on the spinner. If I flip a heads, I could get two on the spinner. Heads, three heads four or heads five. But I could also flip tails and spin a one. Tails and two. Tails three. Tails four. And tails five. So in this scenario there are ten possible outcomes. A compound event consists of two or more simple events. What we were doing on the previous, previous page is we were doing compound events. We were doing two things at once. In the past, last example, we flipped a coin and spun a spinner. That's two different things. The probability of a compound event, just as with simple events, is the fraction of outcomes in the sample space for which the compound event occurs. So let's do an example. Suppose you toss a quarter, a dime, and a nickel. Find the sample space. What is the probability of getting three tails? So we have our coin, which is a quarter, our dime, and our nickel. Let's do a table for this one. The quarter could be tails, dime tails, nickel tails. It could be tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, heads. It could be heads, tail, tail, heads, tails, Heads, 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 tails, or heads, heads, heads. There are eight possible outcomes. So we want the probability of getting three tails. So in other words, tails, tails, tails. I know there are eight possible outcomes, which would be the denominator. And how many of these outcomes are tails, tails, tails? I have one here, and that's it. So the probability is one out of eight. The animal shelter has both male and female Labrador retrievers in yellow, brown, or black. There is an equal number of each kind. What is the probability of choosing a female yellow Labrador retriever? Okay, so we want female and yellow. Let's do a tree diagram. We have the gender, and then we have the color. The gender could be male or female. If it's male, it could be yellow, brown, or black. Same with female. It could be yellow, brown, or black. So our sample space would be male, yellow, male, 
brown, male, black, female, yellow, female, brown, or female, black. So we want the probability of female and yellow. I see one female yellow out of six total outcomes. So the probability of getting a female yellow Labrador Retriever is one out of six. To win a carnival prize, you need to choose one of three doors labeled one through three. Then you need to choose a red, yellow, or blue box behind each door. What is the probability that the prize is in the blue or yellow box behind door two? Let's do a list. We have doors labeled one through three and colors red, yellow, blue. You could pick door one with a red box, door one with a yellow box, door one with a blue box. You could pick door two with a red, two with a yellow, two with a blue, or three with a red, three with a yellow, three with a blue, which makes nine possible outcomes. We want the probability of door two and either blue or yellow. Well, there are nine possible outcomes. We want door two, and we want either blue or yellow. So it looks like there are two choices out of nine. Gerardo spins a spinner with four equal sections labeled A, B, C, and D twice. If letter A is spin at least once, Gerardo wins. Otherwise, Odell wins. Use a list to find the sample space, then find the probability that Odell wins. Now when you're spinning a spinner, you can get the same letter twice. So on the first spin we could get A, on the second spin A. Or we could get A and B, A and C, A and D. We could also get B, A, B, 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 C, B, D, C, A, C, B, C, 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 D, D, A, D, B, D, C, D, D. Now we want the probability that Odell wins. Now it says if letter A is spun at least once, Gerardo wins. So if we see any A's, that's when Gerardo wins. So that's not Odell, that's Gerardo, 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 Odell, 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 Gerardo, Odell, Odell, Odell. Gerardo, Odell, Odell, Odell. So Odell wins if no A's are spun. So the ones I circled had no A's. There are a total of 16 outcomes in which nine of them are winners. So the probability of Odell winning is nine out of 16.